Welcome in 07 Citizens, Black here from Casa Black Gaming, and this is a review for the Anvil Terrapin, also lovingly called the Turtle. My reviews are meant to be packed with tons of info, given at my normal no time wasting format. Now, if you like what I do and feel like I deserve it, then please like, subscribe, and comment to tell me which ship review you would like me to tackle next, or to just talk about why you love this ship so much. And now with the intro out of the way, let's get to the review. So first here on the screen are the stats for the ship. The Terrapin is a small craft that's uses are in the nature of deep space scouting and reconnaissance with an emphasis on small teams being out for extended periods of stay. The Terrapin is not equipped to do much battle, but with its thick plated armor it can withstand attacks and escape and also has been known to take a lickin' and keep on ticking. The ship's only weapons are two size 2 guns mounted on a size 3 nose turret. A size 3 support scanner is also on the ship, which serves as its main use. The ship's dimensions are 19.5 meters in length, 14.5 meters across its beam in width, and 6 meters in height. It seats a crew of 1 to 2. The cargo is 0 SCU of storage. The max combat speed is 157 meters per second, with the out of combat speed 1204 meters per second. The ship claim time from the ASOP terminal is 7 minutes and 52 seconds. Its other ship components are 2 size 2 shields, 3 size 1 coolers, 1 size 2 power plant, and 1 size 1 quantum drive. It has 16 thrusters for thrust and maneuverability, with 2 size 1 hydrogen fuel tanks and 1 size 1 quantum fuel tank. So this section is more for larger ships, but it takes 5 to 8 seconds to open and get from the side hatch of the ship into your seat. The Anvil Terrapin is a small ship and can feel a bit cramped for a ship that is meant to include 1 to 2 players for longer extended missions to scout and do reconnaissance in. There is one bed and a closet sized bathroom with toilet sink and shower and some weapon racks and that's about it for living accommodations. The living quarters are taken up by a large seated support station that sits in the middle of the area and there are of course a few panels on the walls that are meant to house ship components and things that will be important later as the resource management system comes online. <laughs> The Terrapin currently has no paint options available on the store, and to be honest, I'm not really sure why. So the Anvil Terrapin's main purpose is the use of its tech leading scanners to support other gameplay features and teams or to just maybe sell info to the highest bidder. The Terrapin is meant to be able to stay out for long periods of time to do long range scanning for recon and exploration. Having two players on board means the two can take shifts and reconning, thus only one bed is needed, and since the ship can be completely operated with a single person, a second person isn't truly needed, but welcome if that's your thing. This ship has a main singular purpose, and although as a player you could use it as a daily driver of sorts to do things like fly around or pick up cargo boxes, that's about the extent of what you'll be doing in this ship, as it's not strong against bounties or anything higher than a few tiers, and despite its very long weapons burn, Two size two guns are simply not enough to make money on bounties efficiently. This ship is absolutely missing its main feature, that being scanning. Exploration gameplay is pretty much missing in the game for the most part, so this ship, having been around since March of 2018 with the 3.1.0 patch, is a fine example of a ship that came out before the intended gameplay was available in game, but really suffers since many ships have a few more uses, and even when missing one or two gameplay loops, they still allow them to be more useful, whereas the Terrapin is sorely needing more to do. And and I really wish it had it as exploration and scanning are things I'm really looking forward to. Now the Terrapin is a small ship and comes with standard stock ship components which you will need to buy upgrades for in the game in order to maximize its capabilities. Purchasing the shield, power plant, and engine is going to set you back about 147,550 credits, which is not bad and can easily be earned within a few hours of casual play. The engine is definitely something I would buy first as you'll be using this mainly to go back and forth even when exploring and scanning are in the game. 
The good news for the weapons is that the ship comes with two laser repeaters, which is what you're going to need, so there's no need to upgrade those for now, at least until a component's revamp happens and we get new metas in the game. Alright, so the first part of this video has been mostly facts. Now we come to the part where it's more subjective, and although I try not to really push my thoughts and opinions too much on others, I will give my take coming from a reasonable place trying to avoid hyping things for the sake of hype. So how does the Terrapin fare on the eyes? Now I actually love the look and design of this ship. The turtle looks and bulkiness of it, not to mention how unique it looks despite the specific anvil stylings that are present in most of their ships, it just blows me away and is one of the more light designs in the game I have. The interior with its red lights and smoky atmosphere reminds me of older Klingon interiors, which always felt menacing and secretive, and since this ship's main purpose will be sneaky and subterfuge, it is fitting. So yes, I absolutely love the look of this ship inside and out. Alright, so how does this Anvil Terrapin handle in flight? Well, I felt like it flew very well. It's one of those ships that doesn't feel loose or too tight, and honestly with its bulk and look, it flies as you would expect it to. It's not super quick feeling, but you do cover ground at a decent clip and it's very stable to fly and maneuver. And its turn radius is, is on the slower end for a ship of this size, but again, it matches the bulk of the ship, but definitely puts it at odds with smaller, faster ships for bounty missions. Which again, this ship is not really meant to do, so it makes sense. I think it's a good ship for new players to learn how to fly in, especially with how it can bounce off of things. Except for one huge glaring issue, which brings me to the next topic of the review. The Terrapin is expensive, like over $200 expensive, which to me is just not worth it. Not even by a long shot. The end game cost of $2.5 million is not bad, and if anyone wants this ship, that's how I would go about getting one. Unless you're just a super fan who buys these ships based solely on how cool it looks, which that is not me. I'm more of a budgetary spender on most things, so I want frills and what I consider my money's worth when I buy JPEGs, and while I have no problem spending money on my gaming addiction, I need that money to feel justified, and $200 for this ship, even if scanning worked in-game, is not something I would do. But again, I'm not you and not passing judgment on those who buy them with real money, just stating my feelings on my perceived value for buying a ship with real money. I think the Anvil Terrapin is in need of some rethought. I think there's room for it to be able to do a little more than it currently does, and at the very least, I think it needs some more living accommodations like a microwave, a cabinet to store ramen noodles in, and a fridge for some lukewarm fizz cola. As for any other purposes for this ship, I could see it being some sort of wrecking ball or opposite tugboat where it could push the other ships either out of the way or to a nearby refueling hub. A little more stealth features or combat scanning might also be of great use for it, but even though that might cause it to run into the Hornet Tracker territory. Oh, and please, give this damn ship some paints, please. Alright, so that's going to do it for this ship review of the Anvil Terrapin. I both love and hate this ship. Well, I mean, I don't hate the ship, just the way CIG has allowed it to sit without a use for so long. I feel for those players who purchased it back in 2018 or even before, and have had it sitting on the sidelines, trying to use it as some sort of daily driver and watched it get passed by for other gameplay loops that have been realized, while its main purpose just looks more and more like a dream doomed to never really fully be realized. I know that with another system coming within the next year, we might finally start hearing about exploring and scanning as something that we get to do, but it's still looking like a dark year for the Terrapin. Would I buy this ship now or recommend it to new players? Not based on my needs or current gameplay or lack of for the Terrapin. That does not mean I would never recommend it, and it certainly does not mean that I hate it. I love seeing them in the verse, and I truly love the look of it, and think one day it will shine. Anyway, let me know down in the comments how you use yours and how long you've owned it, and remember to to be kind to your fellow gamer. Turtles are slow, but they get there in the end and stay positive citizens.